Hey there guys, PC guy here and we're going to be looking at how the temperatures differ when you have your CPU fan mounted at the front that is in front of the heatsink as compared to at the back. This might seem like a little bit of a pointless test because most uh, coolers for your CPU air coolers that is they are done with the intention of you having the fan at the front so basically the air is pulled through the fan, blown through the heatsink and out at the back presumably to be exhausted. However, there are a few caveats which tend to be mostly the case of user error. In my case, you might remember a few months back when I put together the wife's new PC, I did an oopsie with the cooler and I ordered a cooler with a way too big uh, of a heatsink and well that was basically almost against the ram the fan was almost against the ram and i can swear that i could hear the fan blades actually smacking it so that was definitely not ideal now this is a small channel so i don't have a ton of hardware lying around to just easily replace it it was also making a lot of rockers and noise so i figured i'm gonna try to clean it and see if i can improve that and while i'm at it let's test how the temperatures are from before to after. This was supposed to be a video about also the impact of cleaning your PC and dust buildup and all that sort of thing, but as you can see there was not really a whole lot of dust in there, so I did not really feel like there was a point in that. There was just a tiny, tiny amount of dust on the CPU block and that was basically it. The fans themselves are reasonably clean, with the exception of the uh, dog hair at the bottom since the PC is on the floor, but that was easily resolved. I also switched out the thermal paste, which there has been plenty of footage of that going around, and with my current camera I could not really get a great shot at it, so I'll just leave you with some old footage of it right here. Replacing the thermal paste every now and again is important, uh, 6 months to a year is something that I tend to recommend, and I usually recommend using an alcohol solution like pure alcohol basically since it just evaporates and is non-conductive and all that sort of stuff and it cleans it right up to its shiny uh, pristine self. And even though I did this and this could have some impact on the final results in the of temperature, I don't expect it to have major impact because the thermal paste was not very old, it was 3-4 months at most so there shouldn't be really any issues in that regard. As for the testing, I'm not going to go very in-depth on it, I'm going to run Prime95 for a few minutes, see how it does and how the temperature evolves from there, and then just compare it with the, test, the same test then afterwards, after the PC fan is in the back. Something worth keeping in mind when moving fans around is making sure that it is blowing air in the right direction, so the fan the side where the fan blades are exposed let's say is where it comes in and the side where there are the little supports for well the motor let's call it are the side where the air gets uh, blown out of so keep that in mind when you're changing fans and putting fans around otherwise you might have them uh, pulling or pushing in the reverse direction that you actually want as you can also see, there is no significant dust buildup. That's why I kind of scrapped that part of the testing. And I just went with a plain air can to kind of blow the dust out and, well, vacuum the room afterwards. The thing with vacuum cleaners is if you do use a vacuum cleaner, there are a few negative points. The first one is that it has a ton of static, so it could damage your electronics. The second one is that you could actually suck out some loose or not so well uh, fixated components right out of your PC into the vacuum cleaner. The downsides of the air cans is that if you go too close with them they are prone to uh, create a little bit of condensation because of the, the, of the way that the air is stored in there, there might be temperature differences, so don't go too close with the air can to your electronics and let it uh, sit for a minute or so before turning it back on because of that lingering uh, moisture from the temperature difference. The issue with the fan in the back seems to be a bad bearing, so not much I can do there without going to buy a new fan out there one of these days and full on replacing it. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear it in the video, but when I just spin it with my finger like that, it immediately does sort of a rattling noise, so that's a pretty good telling. The fan works perfectly fine, it's just a matter of the noise it produces. Running Prime 95 for a few minutes beforehand on small FTT to really push the temperature gave me a result of 70 to 73 degrees. Now I only let it run for a few minutes for a couple of reasons, the major of which is because this is no water cooling loop, it does not take time for the water to really saturate and sink in that heat uh, as it would and just 
saturate the loop e either with an AIO or a closed uh, a custom uh, loop, you will have to do those steps and let it run for a little while longer if you actually really want to test uh, how much heat your system can take. With air it's a little bit simpler because well, the heat transference it does not have to travel through the entire loop to saturate it like that. Installing the fan itself at the back was relatively simple. The only catch is that it is quite a bit against the integrated I.O. shield, which is not a, really a problem per se. It's the casing around the fan that is a little bit against it, and not the fan blades itself. When it was at the front, it was the fan blades themselves that were uh, almost touching or basically touching the RAM, so that's a bit more of an issue because there were moving parts. At the back, if it's just a fan casing, it won't have any influence. Again, I would like to reinforce the importance of ordering parts that actually fit your system and not just wing it with a Be Quiet cooler that is a very good cooler, which is why I ordered it, but I kind of got carried away because the PC needed to be built quickly uh, since her roll just died and I did not check the sizes properly, so once again, preparation is the key. Most of you at this point are probably screaming at me about the cable management, however, this is a very basic case, I've been wanting to replace it for a while, uh, so yeah, whenever she wants, she can ask me to pick a, a case for her or help her pick a case. But yeah, there's not a whole lot of room for cables at the back, it's very tight as it is, and it's also not a system that is really being pushed to its limits. It, plays very lightweight games, or well, relatively high, uh, lightweight, like World of Warcraft, it does not do any heavy applications, so the extra cables dangling around don't really have an impact on the temperatures, at least not a very important or noticeable one. Running Prime 95 right after putting the system with the fan at the back gives us a quite similar result, although slightly on the warmer side. So the fan at the back does seem to produce results in the vein of 73-74 degrees, and well, this is somewhat expected. The fans have a easier time pushing the fan out into the radiator than actually pulling the fan through the radiator while being at the back. This has to do with how the fans are designed, it has to do with just uh, aerodynamics basically, the way the air is pulled in. It is pulled in also from the sides instead of just through the radiator because it's a path of least resistance. At the front it is pulled from everywhere, but it only is pulled pushed in one direction which is back uh, to the back through the radiator. Uh, I keep calling it a radiator, but it is really a heatsink anyway, but you get my point, it's get pushed through those fins, and while it is at the back, it is pulled through the fins, but also from the side, so there's a little bit of a loss of pressure there, which accounts for the slightly increased temperature when positioned like that, even though I replaced the thermal paste and cleaned the dust out. So it's an extremely quick and dirty test, but it is enough to give us some results and some insight on if there is a noticeable impact on with putting your fan at the back. And the answer is, well, there is a small impact. It's preferable to have it at the front. Uh, if you are in a position where every degree matters and you are struggling with temperatures, definitely keep it at the front. If for some reason you need to have it at the back, then you can count on a couple degrees difference, but nothing crazy, nothing major. There's a reason the manufacturers uh, build the cooling systems with the fans at the front, and we are now seeing in practice that they are pretty much right to do so. I'm going to be leaving the system like that, with the fan at the back, because like I said, it's a system that does not get pushed to the limits or to the extreme. It produces better acoustics. Uh, I have noticed less noise from it than I was noticing beforehand. In this particular situation, it eliminates the issue with the fan possibly colliding with the hamsticks, which is definitely not ideal. And again, the noise at the back from the fan that probably has bad bearings, it's still there, I have to go grab a fan tomorrow or something and replace it, but that's just a simple case of replacing a fan which is not worth uh, holding the video back to actually do that after. So I hope this has been uh, enlightening to you guys that are possibly facing similar situations and might be forced to have a fan behind the heat CPU heatsink instead of in front. I can't imagine that it's a scenario that happens very often, but as you can see in this case it can possibly occur, uh, especially when you are dealing with parts that are not ideal fits for each other. Hope this has been helpful for you guys, leave a like and a comment if you'd like to help this video gain some visibility and if it has helped you, uh, consider uh, subscribing to the channel and checking out our uh, 
videos. If you would like to see the channel grow, we'll be able to do more and better videos for you guys. Uh, as you could see, uh, the filming was not ideal and that's something that I'm struggling with at the moment, trying to get a good camera to be able to do perspectives like this in a better manner that lets you guys actually see things being done and things at work which is something that this channel is very lacking and growing the channel via a higher subscriber count and such is something that would massively help with something like that so uh, feel free to check out the rest of the content i'll hope i'll see you guys in the next video have fun and i'll see you later